what I'm introducing you to is an awareness that your mind is dreaming. It's dreaming in that it's creating a whole virtual experience. Much in the same way you're dreaming at night, a dream you have at night, something's going on and you feel the emotion of the dream, you're physically moving in the dream, you're talking to people, you're having conversations, you're thinking about things, and there's no not necessarily, unless you're dreaming lucidly, an awareness that it's a dream. By all accounts, in the way you're experiencing the dream, it seems real. You can wake up from a dream if something's happening in the dream and it's like surprises you, you can physically jerk your body and you wake yourself up. You respond physically as if it's real. Okay? And so all of this happening in the virtual world, what is real and what is a dream, when you, once you wake up, you now can question. Okay? That when you're asleep in a dream, you don't question. Okay? So we can have daydreams. We can wander off and think about something. We wander off and think about something else while we're driving a car. And we are more in the dream. We can be having a conversation with a boss, an employee, a friend, and, and getting all excited about something or getting upset about something. In this imaginary conversation with our second self, more real than the person driving the car. We started to do this a long time ago. We started to create virtual versions of ourselves and even virtual versions of the world. Okay. After being scolded about something, we want to go do something again and we imagine being scolded. We imagine getting punished. And in that imagined version, we feel the punishment. We feel the emotional pain of it, being rejected or... Okay. We haven't done the thing yet. We haven't like got the cookie or the brownie, right? Haven't. But we've imagined taking the action. We imagine the response that we may have experienced in the past. And we're like, feel the punishment. We say no. Virtual version of ourself, living an imaginary action, experiencing the imaginary response, and then we don't take an action. Or we do. Well, we do take an action, but we haven't been caught yet. Now we're imagining going to get caught. Oh, now we're going to be in trouble. And we feel guilty. We're walking around feeling guilty, but no one's caught us yet. <laughs> but in our imaginary version, we have been caught. We've been told we're guilty. We know we're guilty because we've been told that. And we've got maybe another version, afraid, just waiting for the punishment. What is the punishment? Let's get it over with. Afraid to get caught? Well, I got caught, I feel guilty. I'm afraid of the punishment. We have three different versions. Three different imaginary selves having three different emotional reactions. We may not have done anything yet. So what I'm endeavoring to make you aware of is that how your mind dreams, these separate versions of self, directly impacts your emotional state in present time. And that, oh, by the way, many of the dreams and places our imagination goes and the points of view it dreams from happens without our awareness, undirected by us. And the emotions that we then feel um, are emotions that we experience not 
understanding how they're happening. But still experiencing them. If you understand how your mind dreams and generates other emotions from these virtual versions of dreams, then it becomes very clear oh, where, where a lot of our emotions come from. And oh, by the way, that we can do something about the changing that. And it's about being very mindful and aware, and taking control over our attention the way our mind dreams. That we can live in present time or at least in more enjoyable dreams. Imagination is an amazing thing. Except a lot of people let it run unmonitored, <laughs> on automatic, based on the patterns of the past. And they end up feeling the same emotions as repeating patterns of their past over and over again. Dreams begin with a point of view. Okay. We are very accustomed to having a singular point of view in this identity that is really just a habitual point of view. We've, we're so often just doing out of habit. We've been doing it so much. We might even be living in identities of fear of the past, fear of the future, found out, guilt, regret. Identities that we've all kind of absorbed into this one and we say, that's me. But maybe that one, the one that's unhappy in that way, feels like a victim, sad, afraid, angry, all those emotional reactions. Maybe that's just a conglomeration of dreamed up identities. And maybe with a new point of view, you'll see that that's not really you. We could explore and find out.